And will the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Look. Here. Commissioner Brastad. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Schulte. Here. Commissioner Meisner. Here. Commissioner Gamash. Here. Commissioner Reiner. Here. And we are all present and accounted for. Let's uh, jump into tax claims and abatements. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. A motion by Commissioner Brastad. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reinert? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Item four passes. We'll move on to item five, where we'll consider accepting the regular claims paid over $500 and purchase card claims paid for the period ending August 27th of 2021. Is there a motion to approve? I have a motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Miser. Further questions or discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reinert? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. And that item is approved. Next, we'll look for approval of minutes from August 24th, 2021, the County Board meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Reinert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Gamash. Any additions or deletions, corrections of any kind? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Those minutes are adopted. Under Chair's remarks today is the recognition of some of the men and women who have spent much of their career in service to the people of Anoka County. The employees we recognize and honor today have been here for up to 35 years, which is truly remarkable. And on behalf of the residents of Anoka County, it's our privilege to publicly thank you today. I'd like to invite, invite Deputy County Administrator Dee Goodman to lead our recognition program. Dee. Thank you, Commissioner, um, Mr. Chair. Before I call on commissioners to present our years of service award, some of our recipients are not able to be here today but I'd like to take a moment and call their names to recognize their service here at Anoka County. So for 30 years, we have Derek Johnson. He's a program coordinator in community corrections <coughs> in the juvenile center. Stacy O'Donohue, senior social worker, community social services and behavioral health. 30 years of Craig Rigness, probation officer aide, community corrections, juvenile center. 30 years, Steve Roy, help desk supervisor, information technology. 30 years, Bridget um, Usselton, I'm gonna get that right. Career probation officer number two, community corrections, enhanced probation supervision. Kelly Nabell, career probation officer number two, community corrections and the probation service center. Sherry Oaks, 35 years, library service assistant, library. 35 years for Diana Stelmach, Jeopardy, chief deputy assessor, property records and taxation assessment and 35 years for William T.D., Equipment Operator, Highway Maintenance. So at this next, we can clap for them since they're not here. <laughs> I hope they're watching except for maybe the highway. <laughs> okay. All right, well for this point, we'd like to now honor the 17 employees in attendance today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as I call your name, please come up to accept your award right up here. And uh, Commissioner Reinert, you will be up first to present. And the names are on the back for you. All right. So for 30 years, we have Tracy Avery, Program Coordinator, Community Corrections. For 30 years, we have Philip Fallhaver, Assistant Superintendent, Highway Maintenance. Thank you, Commissioner Reinert. Um, Commissioner Meisner.
All right, for 30 years, we have Jeffrey Foster, engineering technician, highway engineering. And for 30 years, we have Christina Haney, Service Center Specialist, Licensed Centers, Coon Rapids. Uh, next up, we have Commissioner Gamash. We have 30 years, uh, Deborah Lavasser, Service Center Specialist, License Centers, Coon Rapids. <laughs> and for 30 years, we have Georgine Murphy, Processing and Materials Supervisor at the Library. <laughs> and 30 years, Richard Sells, Court Service Manager, Community Corrections. All right, next I have Commissioner West. And, oh, hang on, I'm out of there. Okay, 30 years. I have Cindy Tem Temberl, public health nurse, intake certified assessor, community social services and behavioral health. <laughs> next I have Lisa Thomas, career probation officer two, Community Corrections, Juvenile Court. <laughs> and next I have Commissioner Look. For 30 years, I have James Odvig, El Eligibility Specialist in um, Human Services Economic Assistance. For 30 years, I have Amy Ulrich, Public Assistance Program Coordinator, Human Service Economic Assistance. <laughs> and I have, for 30 years, Elizabeth Roberts, Technical Service Assistant, Library. <laughs> All right, next we move into the 35-year category. So for Commissioner Bradstead, we have 35 years, Janet Kleckner, Branch Manager, Rum River Library. <laughs> and 35 years, Dave Paschal, Detention Commander, um, Sheriff's Office Jail. <laughs> and next up, I have Commissioner Schulte. Every year. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to do this right. I want to make sure they have their certificate up here. Um, we've got uh, missing one here. So, yeah. Oh, I'm oh, a cheater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, we'll get it. <laughs> 35 years, maybe when I do that at 35 years, I will have this right. Okay, here we go. Brian Lindbergh, Assistant County Attorney, County Attorney's Office. Jeff. 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 Jeff Reimringer, System Service Technician, Property Records and Taxation. And last but not least, 35 years, Lisa Schmidt, Child Support Collection Specialist in Economic Assistance. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody, for attending. We appreciate having you here. Thank you, Dee. I would like to add, we are incredibly fortunate to have so many longtime loyal employees in Anoka County. Your breadth of knowledge is so impressive, and it's amazing to realize you represent 825 years of Anoka County history and expertise. Thank you again for your service and allowing us to celebrate you today. I, um, I look at 30 or 35 years in one place, and I know what it is. I've worked at the same shop since I was 11 years old, so it's a little different when it's a family-run thing, but I've been there 40-plus years, so I know what it's like. And some days it's a daunting experience to get out of bed and go to work, and other days it's the most rewarding thing you've ever done. Uh, but you kept coming back during the good times and the bad, and we respect that and we thank you. Anoka County is a better place for your service. Thank you. <laughs> Any further comments from commissioners? Or Attorney Palumbo? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I'd certainly like to commend, you know, Brian Lindbergh, obviously, uh, working in my department. He's obviously correcting the record even again today. You know, so. <laughs> I certainly appreciate it. And Brian has done all the work, and he's not only done it for our office, it's done for the Anoka County Bar Association. He prepares a, uh, an update of the law every year and is well-respected, and I certainly want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to all the employees, but obviously someone uh, in my uh, office um, I'd like to just call out and recognize. So thank you, Brian, for all your work all through the years. Mr. Chair, that's all on the comments I have. Thank you, Attorney Palumbo. Further comments? Well, our... Second item today, we're recognizing September as National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. I'm going to ask Commissioner Reinert, Chair of our Human Services Committee, to speak about this important month. Commissioner Reinert. All right, thank you. Um, so during September, uh, mental health advocates, uh, prevention organizations, uh, survivors, and other unite to focus on suicide prevention. Efforts to prevent suicide are conducted by many organizations and individuals year round, but September has been chosen as a time to raise further awareness about this often stigmatized and sometimes taboo topic. Suicidal thoughts, like other mental health conditions, can affect anyone at any point in their lives, regardless of age, gender, or background. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people ages 10 through 34, and the 10th leading cause of death overall in the United States. Some of the large or some of the highest rates of suicide in the US are among American Indian and non-Hispanic white communities. In Anoka County during 2020, we saw a rise in suicide deaths from the previous year. At this point, I want to bring a little attention to veterans suicide prevention. Um, every day, some people know this, some people don't, 22 uh, vets take their lives. And um, there is a, an organization um, that they put together a, a coin that you can um, purchase and pass out. Um, I do this where you can go to a website, uh, purchase them, go to your local VFW or American Legion, drop them off, give them the, to the commander, and they'll make sure they make it into the right hands. Uh, they cost about $25 a piece. The website is uh, wrestling for the number four life.org. A lot of people give uh, donations uh, to a lot of different places. Um, I would encourage people to order these coins, drop them off at American Legion or VFW because for 25 bucks you might be saving a life. Uh, it's important to bring this topic to light to let people know there are resources available if they're struggling with thoughts of suicide. Now I'm going to ask Denise Kermis, manager of Anoka County Behavioral Health and Adult Services to talk more about National Suicide Prevention Month in Anoka County. Denise. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the board, I'm Denise Kermis. I manage our behavioral health and adult services area here for Anoka County. And I'm here today to share some information and some resources about suicide prevention and awareness. Thank you very much. Uh, today, or as we all know, uh, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and today I wanted to share some statistics, some community prevention efforts, and also some suicide prevention resources. Um, looking at the national impact, we already had shared some information, some very important facts about suicide, but I just wanted to highlight a few others. 
Uh, the overall suicide rate in the United States has, ra has increased by 35% since 1999. And we have 78% um, of all people who die by suicide are male. Um, we already talked about that the demographics, the American Indian and Alaska Native and non-Hispanic white communities are, are one of the, some of the highest rates of suicide. Also, lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide than straight youth. Here I wanted to give some local information from Ano our Anoka County Medical Examiner's Office. Um, this is looking back at uh, numbers of deaths by suicide that have been confirmed as deaths by suicide. In 2018, we see our numbers were 45. They dipped down a little bit in 2019, but then we had a rise again in 2020 of 52. Um, this year is just a partial year, so we have five right now reported as suicide deaths. I'm hoping those numbers stay that way, but I'm not really sure um, what it will look like by the end of the year. Um, what we saw here is the age ranges, um, uh, the highest rate of suicide, which really surprised me, was that age group of 41 to 65. Most of us do a lot of our prevention efforts and trainings for school, school age youth, but really it looks like we need to target that population of 45 to 65. And then we have, we are similar to the national statistics where male, male deaths by suicide are higher than female deaths. And when I look at this, these are just, these are numbers on this page, but really what they are is it's loved ones, it's, it's individuals, it's people. And it's uh, people we know, it's our neighbors, it's our family members, it's our coworkers. Um, and so it's just so important that we really raise awareness on this and we look at ways to prevent suicides. And I think I, I've said it before and other people have said it too, zero suicide is the only acceptable number. And so we need to do whatever we can to try to raise awareness and really bring this, bring those numbers down to zero if possible. This is a really good resource. NAMI has always been a wonderful resource for us related to mental health and suicide. This is just an example of a resource guide that NAMI had posted on their website. And it was it also included information warning signs, warning signs about suicide. And I really felt like I needed to share some of these information, information on this. Um, it's, it's important for all of us to really look at those signs of suicide. Anytime we see any change in behaviors, that's a warning sign. Um, if they've become more relax, uh, reckless or they're withdrawing from friends and family, that's really a warning sign that we need to take attention, make attention. Dramatic mood swings, impulsive or reckless behavior. Something that's very um, telling is if somebody's buying a weapon or starting to collect some and save some of their, um, their pills and especially when they're giving away some of their possessions. I've heard that and I've seen that and it's, it's chilling, it really is, and it's something that we really need to be aware of. Um, and so these are behaviors that we really need to take seriously and we really need to address it and get help for that person. And so I listed below here our mobile crisis provider, which is Canvas Health. Their number is 763-755-3801. And also, um, it's important to call dispatch as a resource. So I wanted to share with you some of our community prevention efforts. Um, media has been very powerful to raise awareness. Um, I was interviewed um, in an ABC newspaper article back in April, and so was Nita Kumar from the Anoka Hennepin School District, where we um, reacted to the upswing of uh, suicides. Um, of 2020, and so it was a wonderful opportunity for us to raise awareness and really give hope and resources to the public. And so I think media is very important uh, for pre prevention efforts. Also, when I said earlier that we need to do something, when I say that, it, I don't mean that Anoka County is the only person to do this. We need to really have partnerships. It's very important to have partnerships. And so I listed just a few of them here. Many of you know about the North Metro Roundtable that began in 2019. Um, it's, it's been a wonderful group of, of uh, um, Alina Health System, the Sheriff's Department, community departments, mental health agencies, our crisis providers, to all work together on, on just really raising awareness and also to really coordinate services better. Um, one of the things that came out of it that's been very, very promising is that we have hired through People Incorporated an embedded mental health professional who's working with the Blaine Police Department and the Coon Rapids Police Department, very excited about that. Um, some of the subgroups have been working on just service integration, just developing better relationships and how to, trying to be that safety net for people who really need services. 
Um, we also have done work on housing, and we have a new group now that is looking at suicide prevention and awareness to try to coordinate our efforts so that we're not duplicating services. Also, some other partnerships. I'm very excited about Canvas Health, who is our mobile crisis provider. They are working with our 911 dispatch to really try to communicate better on when they get calls that might be really mental health calls and not where law enforcement needs to respond. It could be something that uh, Canvas Health could respond to in, 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 case, in, in the place of that. Um, other partnerships that we have is the Anoka County Children and Family Council and also our mental wellness campaign. We're very lucky to have a nonprofit organization in our county that is um, reducing stigma and raising awareness. Um, what we have been doing is we've been really highlighting and promoting trainings throughout our community. Question, Persuade, and Refer is a QPR training, and that's been um, really uh, been promoted very widely across our community. We also have promoted mental health first aid, and we've had a number of suicide prevention awareness trainings. We had one on May 4th with Wilder, and then we have a plan for October 4th for another training using the Minnesota Department of Health. And then these are just a list of some of the website resources. Uh, Canvas Health, as I mentioned before, is our mobile crisis provider. They also receive funds from the Department of Human Services to be our regional suicide prevention coordinator. And so um, they have a lot of great resources on their website. Um, again, their number is 763-755-3801. In Minnesota, we have a text for life. Uh, for crisis um, number, and if uh, a person will text MN to 741-741, they'll get services. Um, I also wanted to give the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number on here. And as I mentioned before, NAMI um, has a lot of resources on their website. Um, they had a, they've got really great resources related to the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, so I um, would promote that um, for people to visit that site. Save Suicide Awareness and Voices for Education is also a wonderful website. Um, they have um, support groups throughout the nation uh, listed, and you can find local support groups in even Anoka County in our metro area. And then I also listed some resources on our Anoka County website. If you look under Behavioral Health Services under our webpage, you'll see some information on that. And that is it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Denise, for your insight on suicide prevention and sharing information about how people can get help. Suicide prevention is an endeavor that takes persistence, sensitivity, and an ability to talk about uncomfortable topics. In Anoka County, we have county employees and community partners who are here to listen and offer aid in times of crisis. If anyone watching this presentation today is struggling with thoughts of hopelessness, please reach out any of our county or area professionals for help or talk to others which feel with whom you feel comfortable. Our hope is that in preventing death through suicide, it will give people a chance to live the lives they were meant to share with others. I think all of us have been touched one way or another by suicide through the years. Uh, the last uh, 18 months or two years have been more troubling than most for a lot of people and getting through it takes takes people banding together. And that's what we need to do. We know, we know that sometimes there are signs, as Denise referred to, the signs that somebody's going through something, but there's other times where people are really super strong and they put on this face that they are really put together and everything's going great, but there's something not right behind the scenes and we need to ask questions and, and find that out. Because sometimes it's the people that walk among us, that, well, most times it's the people that walk near us that will have those, uh, that turmoil that'll bring about those hopeless thoughts so I urge you to uh, get to know your neighbors and know your family and friends closer than ever. And let's, uh, let's tackle this scourge. Let's uh, get this downturn. I mean, the numbers so far in 2021, if accurate through the Midwest Medical Examiner is at five so far this year. Mm -hmm. That's a remarkable turnaround. And maybe that's just the uh, hope of coming out of COVID. Maybe it's the hope of getting out and getting fresh air and whatever it is, we need to bottle it and make sure we can carry it forward. And, get in a good place from here. Thank you, Denise, for your presentation. Thank you. For our last item today, we're going to make take a moment to note that September is also Workforce Development Month in Anoka County. There are 16 local employer-led workforce development boards, 
that work in conjunction with elected officials to set policy and priority in their communities, engage employers to determine workforce needs, and act as accountability agents for local employment and training programs. Minnesota's workforce development system has a long-standing and demonstrated track record of developing cutting-edge new programs and strategies while continuously improving services offered at Minnesota's career force locations. In August, I was elected president of the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards by the entirety of their membership, and I couldn't be prouder to serve in this capacity. This board and all career force locations in our state invest heavily in education, training, and career advancement. And simply put, this makes life better for our citizens. Now I'm going to ask Nicole Swanson, director of the Anoka County Jobs Training Center, to speak more about the importance of workforce development in our county. Nicole. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to share uh, more information about the employment and training services that the Job Training Center and the Career Force in Blaine provides job seekers and businesses in our community. My name is Nicole Swanson, and I'm the director of the Job Training Center and the Career Force in Blaine, located at 1201 89th Avenue, Northeast in Blaine, at the Blaine Human Service Center, and I'm proud to serve the Anoka County community. I'm thrilled to share more information about the employment and training services we provide as we continue to experience a workforce shortage along with enhanced unemployment ending September 4th, 2021, which affected an estimated 17,000 Anoka County residents. In regards to the job training, um, the job seeker services that we provide, oh, thank you, uh, wanna provide information regarding the services uh, for youth, adults, and seniors. And you can see by the information in front of you, um, the career services and training information that we provide. Uh, we opened the career lab at the Blaine Human Service Center on August 16th at limited capacity by appointment. And since that date, we have served over 150 individuals by appointment that are seeking employment or that are seeking uh, increased employment due to being underemployed at this time. The staff provide expertise in job search techniques, resume development, online workshops, just to name a few pieces. And you can also see by this information that we also provide an online information inquiry. If you go to www.anokacounty.us slash JTC apply, that online information system allows individuals to inquire about program services that we have. And within 24 hours, business hours, a staff member from our team connects with that individual. And we are providing obviously virtual appointments as well as limited in-person appointments. Um, that business improvement process was uh, under development before COVID. And so when COVID hit us and we provided and quickly pivoted to virtual services, that opportunity was key for us to maintain connections with the public. Next uh, our business services that we provide, uh, not only to our local area, but our full region, uh, is a variety of services. And you can see by the information in front of you, we are looking at assisting businesses with uh, attracting workforce, hiring workforce, retaining workforce, which is key at this time. And on this sheet highlights some of the services and opportunities for businesses. On the job training, incumbent work training, along with work experience and internships, both for young people and adults, are several opportunities for individuals not only to see what's available in the workforce, but also for businesses to see what's available for new workers. We also provide um, online virtual events. You can see by the anokacounty.ezvirtualfair.com. We have an online process. We were um, very active before COVID providing in-person hiring events at the Blaine location that were very, very popular, both to job seekers and to businesses. And we had to quickly pivot that to an online system. Um, that is gonna continue to take place through 2021, but our plan is to return to in-person events starting in 2022 with an online presence uh, in the metro region. So more information to come forward about that. Along with um, the incumbent worker training and work experience opportunities I mentioned, we do also provide information to employers regarding um, tax credits, along with free hiring assistance at www.minnesotaworks.net and also careerforcemn.com. A couple different ways to connect with our team certainly is the phone number at 763-324-2300. Otherwise, you can reach us um, online, as I mentioned, through the inquiry or at www.anokacounty.us/jtc. 
We also, this spring, launched a Facebook page, and so you can also follow us there and see a variety of events that are taking place not only locally, uh, but within the region. And then lastly, Anoka County would not be a leader in workforce development without um, recognizing the talented, uh, high, um, innovative, and uh, amazingly um, skilled team that we have at the Job Training Center. And so I just wanted to take a moment to thank them for their hard work and continued, uh, um, their continued hard work during this time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nicole, for providing us a brief look into the robust workforce development system in our county. Uh, as you thank your staff that work for you and, and make Anoka County truly a pillar in the workforce community in Minnesota, uh, we can't help but recognize you for leading that staff and you are recognized across the state as I work with the Minnesota Workforce Board. I am learning just how revered you are and, and your work is, so thank you for that. Um, you know, you'd think with some of the stats that Nicole threw out that 17,000 people on unemployment insurance benefits will run or have run out and will be looking for work that that might help put a dent in our workforce problem. It does not. Uh, even if all 17,000 of those take a job in Anoka County, we still have thousands and thousands of open positions. Uh, we have a workforce problem we will be dealing with for some time, and our Career Force Center will be busier than ever figuring that out. Uh, and, and I'll go a step further in saying, even if we had the workforce to fill all the positions, the Workforce Center, the Career Force Center still needs to be there. It still needs to retrain people, uptrain people, uh, get people in the right mindset to go back to work and get them in the right mindset to take take the next step to that next job. Uh, so I thank you for your work, Nicole, and your team. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to be deeper involved as the years go on, and uh, thank you again for all your work. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to offer Resolution 2021-99, proclaiming September Workforce Development Month in Anoka County, and ask that my fellow commissioners join me in support. The resolutions before us. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That will pass unanimously. Now we'll move on to committee reports and we will turn to Commissioner West with the Management Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have one action item. It is a restructure in human services and social services behavioral health. And this is a result of an increased need or increased applications of adult and child foster care. Uh, it's going from a current 0.725 FTE office support assistant uh, in addition, uh, adding a 0.275 new office support uh, assistant to restructure it to a one FTE. And that of course is the need for the additional uh, applications and it will affect our budget this year by 10,600 and in future years by s some something over 25,000. Is there a motion to approve? I'd like to move approval. I have a motion by Commissioner Reinert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Gamash. Is there further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. That item passes. And Mr. Chairman, the rest is informational and that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner West. We will now move to the Transportation Committee report. And I can tell you we met on Tuesday, September 7th over at the Highway Division building. And we have three action items for you today. First two under highway, uh, the committee recommends approval of a resolution authorizing the county engineer to acquire the property at 6000 Hodgson Road in the city of Lino Lakes. Is there a motion to approve? I'd like to move approval. Motion by Commissioner Reinert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Uh, further discussion. I think we'll turn to Joe and get a little presentation. Um, the Transportation Committee has seen this a couple of times, but it might be the first time the board's had a crack at this, so I'll let Joe explain this briefly. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the board. Uh, my name is Joe McPherson. I'm the Transportation Division Manager and County Engineer. So the item you have before you, uh, 
as Mr. Chair had mentioned, is an approval to acquire the property that you see on the screen before you. It's the property located in the northeast corner there of Hodgson Road and County Road J. We are currently working with the City of Lionel Lakes as well as Ramsey County. This is a border road. Uh, County Road J is a border road, as well as the City of Shoreview for an upcoming development that's uh, forecasted or uh, being proposed in the northwest corner of this intersection. It's a rather large development, a senior community. And as part of that, there's some improvements that need to take place on both of those roadway systems. And knowing that um, the signal system that's at the intersection of these two roadways has been there for some time, and actually the original signal system was a patched together system made of spare parts that we had lying around in Ramsey County. So it's, uh, it's served its purpose. So we're working collaboratively with these agencies as well as the developer to come up with a plan. The property before you today is a property where the owner has expressed an interest to sell that property. So this would be an acquisition at arm's length. Uh, so we try and reach a negotiated settlement with the owner. Any further discussion or questions? Commissioner Gamash. Thank you, just for clarification. We have the circle, does that mean it's the entire area under the circle or is it just that one corner piece? Yeah, sure. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Gamash, great question. It's just the long sliver, the one closest to Ash Street there, oh, or County Road J. Thank you. Good question. Further questions? Seeing none, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. And this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. And that item passes. The next item before you, the committee recommends award of a contract to Cobalt Coatings in the amount of $310,250 for the 2021-2023 County Traffic Signal Painting Project at various locations throughout Anoka County. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Brastad. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Meisner. Further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Just commentary. Uh, I, I know that it costs money to, to paint them, but you know the, it's always shocking to me to see the, the, the bottom line amount to paint them. I would suggest that's actually a pretty low number compared to past years. I, uh, really? I have seen numbers in the millions for painting stoplight poles. Oh, thank you. Actually, that's so my follow up comment then to that, because we, we are actually rolling out where they're not painted uh, the, the newer signs. So they're galvanized or, you know, there's no paint on them. OK, got it. Our new, our new policy calls for galvanized poles unpainted. Mm -hmm. And you'll see almost all of them that are being well, all of them that are being erected now will be that way unless we're repairing an old one that was crashed into or and then we'll mm -hmm. use spare parts and they may be painted. Thank you. You're welcome. So long term, this number should get smaller and smaller as we go through the, unfortunately, decades, not years. But uh, it'll take a long time to replace 243 some stoplights. So we'll get there. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I will mention at the committee we did talk about different processes used for the painting and whether there's a better idea. And Joel will be working with his team to find out if there is a better process. Uh, Commissioner Look mentioned rhino lining that they use in truck beds, and there's just so many different options now that you can paint. It might cost a little more up front, but it may last longer. It may not get that rust buildup that some of our <coughs> previous painting projects did. Seeing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. And that item passes. <clears throat> Next, under our transit area, the committee recommends approving Anoka County contract for the 2021 Section 5310 Transit Coordination Assistance Project, or TCAP, grant agreement to implement transportation services for enhanced mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Gamash. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Miser. Uh, we've had a presentation on this before. We've talked about it too many times to talk about it again. Unless somebody really wants another explanation, we will go right to a roll call vote. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. That item passes. The rest of the transportation uh, item is all informational. 
So we will move on then to the Parks Committee report, and we will turn to Commissioner Gamash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, Parks Committee uh, held a meeting on Tuesday, September 7th. Uh, we have four action items before us. The committee recommended recommends the county board to authorize resolution 2021-PK15 and the Anoka County contract C-008757, which will allow an exchange of land between Anoka County and the city of Minneapolis. This is something that has come before us um, previously. It is regarding um, the request by the city of Minneapolis and their public works department to uh, have some property that was owned by Anoka County off of um, East River Road, where we had just a set up where I was, uh, I was off the trail, and they are doing some work in that area, and they um, offered to switch some land that abuts our park, the Riverfront Regional Park on the north side, uh, for that piece of property so that they can do some um, uh, work that they want to do, and it's kind of a 0.33 acres, just one swap for another. Uh, we did have them, we asked them to um, do some work to look at if there was anything in the soils of that area, and uh, we were able to get uh, some pretty good assurances that things look pretty good there. And uh, this is a nice little piece. Uh, they will um, hold on to the piece for a period of time while they do some work, or they're gonna store some, ve um, some uh, vehicles and other things there, and then once they're done with their work, they will move it. They will pay for um, revamping the land and putting it back to a nat natural site. Uh, so that the, as the county is really um, not under any um, issues or an, an, any expense uh, for this, so it looked like a pretty good swap for us. And I will make that move. The resolution has been offered by Commissioner Gamash. Is there further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reiner. Aye. That item passes. The next item is the license agreement. Um, to, we recommend the county board authorize a license agreement with the city of Minneapolis for the 0.3 acres of the replacement of land at Riverfront Regional Park. That's Noka County contract C-008491. Uh, this has gone through all the processes with our Anoka County um, attorney's office, um, very, they uh, always work great and they always do a great job and they drafted a license agreement for us and we're feeling comfortable with everything that was in there. Uh, so we approved it um, at the meeting. Um, because it's a legal thing, if Jeff wants to add anything, Mr. Perry is here from our, uh, our parks uh, department. Uh, Jeff, did you want to add anything f on, uh, regarding the licensing? Certainly, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good morning. My name is Jeff Perry, Park Director for Anoka County. Uh, this land exchange uh, will occur a week from tomorrow when the Metropolitan Council takes action on approving the master plan amendment for the park. So a week from tomorrow, uh, the land uh, after the agreement uh, is signed, uh, then it will become Anoka County's uh, property here. And uh, this license agreement is relative to uh, the city of Minneapolis has some plans to expand their facility. So they need to use this project or this property temporarily just for construction access and to store some equipment. So they need it from approximately October 1st of this year through the end of December of next year. And uh, the Parks Department worked with the attorney's office to uh, put a formula together to uh, uh, prepare a cost to the city of Minneapolis to use this property. So it's going to be just north of $7,000 that the city will pay Anoka County to, to use this pro uh, property. And then when they're done at the end of December of 2022, uh, the city of Minneapolis will restore it to uh, the desires of Anoka County. So essentially they'll take up the class five in the area, uh, bring in some topsoil and uh, restore it to tall grass native prairies. So it's a benefit uh, to Anoka County. This land is, uh, will now be uh, directly adjacent to Riverfront Regional Park as opposed to you know, a quarter mile south. Uh, so the land swap is, is beneficial for the city, but it's also beneficial to Anoka County and it'll provide a nice uh, natural buffer uh, for our disc golf course and our uh, Mississippi River Regional Trail that runs through that area. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, that's a, a summary of, of this license agreement. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner 
Meisner, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reiner. Further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reiner? Aye. Commissioner Luck? Aye. That item passes. The uh, next item, uh, Mr. Chair, is a grant amendment authorization. The committee recommends the county board to authorize a second grant amendment to the Bunker Beach Infrastructure Grant, which will increase the amount of the grant by $220,676 to a total grant amount of $2,608,323.80. This is NOCA contract C0007346. I'm sure you all remember uh, when we had a 13% reduction that brought about by the state of Minnesota's Office of Management and Budget during COVID. Um, they are returning that do the money back to us. Um, and so that adds us adds back that 220,676 that they uh, removed and um, it gets added back into our budget for that. Um, Jeff, I, I just wanted to open this up for you to make any comment about that, but it's good news as uh, we're fully, um, the grant has come back in a full amount to us, but I'll see if you have any additional comments. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The only thing that I would add is um, this reappropriation uh, can be used as reimbursement to um, our costs associated with Bunker Beach Water Park Improvement Project. So it's great news for Anoka County. It essentially saved two, over $220,000 of using uh, Anoka County CIB dollars for this. Uh, it will be uh, park and trail legacy financing that uh, we have uh, well over a year to, to reimburse it, but we'll take care of it right away and get it squared away. And uh, it's good news for Anoka County to, uh, to pick up this 13% reduction that was anticipated by uh, the Office of Minnesota Management and Budget about a year ago because uh, they were projecting sales tax revenues to decline during the pandemic. And uh, that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, the, the sales tax revenues actually were, were fairly stable throughout the uh, you know, 2020. And um, the good news is uh, Anoka County gets this reappropriation. Is there a motion to approve? I'm happy to move that one. I have a motion by Commissioner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Commissioner Gamash, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Look. Is there further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reiner? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. That item passes. And item number four is a memor memorandum of understanding. The committee recommends to the board to authorize this memorandum of understanding with Minnesota Off-Road Cyclists, uh, MORC, for the volunteer maintenance of the 3.5 miles of single track trail to be constructed within the Rice Creek Chain of Lakes Park Reserve. This is an Oka County contract C0008750. Uh, you probably remember uh, from discussions in the past that this um, began in January of 2018 and we've gone through uh, quite a bit of meetings and discussions and um, uh, taking tours of trails and, and touring our own facilities out there at the park. Uh, we actually had an open house for um, people that wanted to talk about the single track trail in May of 2018 and we did get some great feedback and I think we uh, now have um, a very excellent plan that put together uh, that will make this a great trail. We have gone through all of the um, uh, things we had to do for archaeological investigation with uh, uh, MnDOT and um, and that was all approved and they did the, a lot of laying out of flags and markers so that we stay out of certain areas and we've now put together a trail that does just that. This trail will be safer. Uh, this trail will be more efficient for the riders. Um, it's going to be a single track trail that will be one way and well marked as to how that works and keeps them out of areas that were disturbing um, the property in that area. Uh, so what we're doing today is uh, looking at this memorandum of understanding with um, the off-road cyclists. They will provide a lot of volunteers to help us out. Um, and I know Jeff's been working with them closely, so if you want to give some of the details as to what they'll do, Jeff, um, to help us with this, it's a great group that we're working with and we're excited to have them on board. Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Minnesota Off-Road Cyclists is a uh, nonprofit 
a group of volunteers that, uh, you know, they advocate uh, for single track trails throughout the metropolitan area. Uh, they have uh, well over 100 volunteers. They've worked with a lot of uh, landowners, primarily local governments, in uh, helping maintain these trails to keep them safe and to provide advocacy uh, for the sport of single track uh, trail riders and, uh, and mountain bikers. So well-established uh, nonprofit uh, that pro will provide great benefit to Anoka County through helping us. So we'll use less of our resources to maintain this trail. So essentially they'll uh, do regular inspections, uh, do some vegetation management, do some grooming in the winter time, and just make sure that the, the trail is, uh, is safe first and foremost, but also to continue that uh, the trail is meeting the needs um, of the public demand uh, for single track trail users as well. So it's a great benefit to Anoka County. Uh, what the county gives in return is we provide a storage unit for them so they can store their equipment. We'll have that uh, in a secured location at our maintenance facility at the Rice Creek Chain of Lakes and then uh, authorize them to, to set up a, uh, a booth twice a year uh, near the single track trail just to promote the sport of single track trail users and make sure that uh, Anoka County is best meeting the needs um, of that particular user group. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair uh, and members, uh, yeah, this is, this is a good deal for the county and uh, this MOU just uh, uh, certifies the agreement between the county and the expectations through uh, Mork. Thank you, Jeff. Is there a motion to approve? I'd be happy to make that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Reinhardt. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Gamash. Is there further discussion? Commissioner, look. Mr. Chair, I just had to look closer. I thought maybe that was Commissioner Reinhardt on the bike. Then I <laughs> yeah, before nice, I shaved. Nice beard, Commissioner Reinhardt. Uh, Commissioner Reiner, your thoughts? No, I'd like to also mention, though, um, along th these trails have been there for 50 some years, <clears throat> um, a lot of them. Uh, they used to be uh, dirt bike trails, but now they're mountain bike trails and um, developed over the last maybe 15, 20 years uh, more and more into that. Uh, so, really happy to see this action happening and this activity beginning to finally get done. Uh, the other thing, though, I do want to mention is that um, trees fall all the time on these trails. Um, we have, uh, along with this, I believe they're called ambassadors, that they can, uh, volunteers, uh, we already have a lot of volunteers that are uh, scouting these trails. Um, I rode on uh, Friday, Sunday, and Monday on these trails. And on Friday, there was a tree. By the time I was out there on Sunday, it was already cleared. I mean, people are out there and doing it. But the, we, we, we would, would like to know... Um, or have these people sign up and be ambassadors uh, officially. And uh, so that program's out there and for people that want to help out and uh, keep these trails clear and operating, um, what called the, the park department? Yes, okay. uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Reiner, that would be great. Uh, park department main number 763-324-3300 for, uh, for the benefit of the public. Okay, and I'll drop some names too to you to um, connect with. I um, probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to say that has risk management looked at this? I mean, people using chainsaws on our trail system is a little concerning, I would think. Yeah, so. uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, that's, that's a great question. And yes, everything is funneled through risk management uh, with MORC. And if we have any additional volunteers that are interested, um, we ensure that, um, you know, if power tools are going to be used, then there are waivers signed and certifications required for that. So uh, we take that very seriously, but thank you for bringing that, uh, that component up. Mm -hmm. And I will say I was confident that it had already taken place. I just thought I would get it into the record because we mentioned chainsaws and volunteers, yeah. and uh, those often don't go well together on county property to protect the taxpayers' dollars from lawsuits. Commissioner Reiner. Uh, most of the time it's a, it's a handsaw and a backpack. Very good. Sounds like a true mountain biker. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, we do have a motion and a second, so we will go to a roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reiner. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. <clears throat> Aye. That item passes. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Gamash. We will now jump back to item nine on our original agenda, where we'll consider approving the self-insured health care insurance plan rates effective January 1st of 2022 
and the county contributions to health insurance premiums and health reimbursement accounts for benefit eligible employees as outlined by the personnel rules and regulations as recommended by the responsible commissioner for insurance. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. J just commentary. I spoke with you before the meeting, and I just want to give my appreciation to the people who um, are able to get this together. We did have a full uh, informational session about this as a full board, but as I mentioned to you, reading this, there's a lot of information that is really difficult to be an expert in. So thank you, Mr. Keller. I think it's a good time to point out that we do have experts in, in our in our county that do this work for us. And we're very lucky, well, fortunate to be in a position where we were able to self-insure last year. And moving forward, it's uh, this year is a prime example of where we can save our employees money and benefit the taxpayers by keeping costs down for the county itself. So, Commissioner Luck. Yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you. I, you know, I recall those days when we were looking at 14% increases and how we're going to tackle this and millions and millions and millions of dollars, you know, that we're having to come up with every single year. And, and, um, and I just want to draw people's attention to uh, the county contrib uh, contribution change is zero and the employee contribution change is zero. So I've never seen a year where it's flat or where we could offer flat to the employees. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. So kudos to everybody involved. And uh, this is a great program, very happy it's been implemented and very successful. So thank you. Well, to that point, Commissioner, look, we, we worked for years to get to this point. Every year we'd look at, is it time to self-insure? And every year we couldn't quite do it. The numbers weren't right. The, everything benefited staying with a provider. And then suddenly the stars aligned and our analysis said now is the time to do it. And I think, uh, as I started out saying, I think we're in a really good position moving forward. Uh, but for some catastrophic issues that could pop up, costs will stay down, and that saves our employees' money and it does save the taxpayers' money for the county share. Is there further discussion? Mr. Chair, just, Mr. A, just a quick question, and I don't even know if we have this or, or if Bill would have this information available. Um, I was kind of curious, how, how many of our employees uh, working within the county um, are on our health care plan? I know there's, you know, there's obviously families that might have two, two earners and they decide to go somewhere else. I'm just kind of curious on, on percentage. Mr. Keller. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, county commissioners, uh, my name is Bill Keller. I'm the director for central services. And to add, answer your question, Commissioner Gamash, we have approximately 80% of our employees that do take health coverage. Great. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. That item passes. We'll move on to item 10, where we'll consider approving a contract C0008749 with Unum for voluntary vision materials only insurance plan from Blue Cross Blue Shield for 30 hours or more per week benefit eligible positions, non-union and union employees for a four year period ending December 31st of 2025 as recommended by the responsible commissioner for insurance. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Look, second by Commissioner Meisner. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. That item passes. We'll move to item 11, where we'll consider amending a contract C0008079 with Blue Cross Blue Shield for retiree Medicare supplemental insurance to move from Plan N to a customized group Medicare Advantage beginning January 1st of 2022, with no change to the prescription plan options and providing county contributions as calculated in the Anoka County personnel rules and regulations, as recommended by the Commissioner for Insurance. So moved. Is there a motion? motion by Commissioner Look? Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, this requires a roll call vote. Commissioner Reinert. 
Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. And that item passes. Thank you, Bill. Again, we appreciate your diligence in these efforts. Uh, next, we'll consider acknowledging that the County Board has received a copy of the proposed City of Coon Rapids Tax Increment Financing District for the following purposes. Uh, a, reviewing the proposal to modify the redevelopment plan for housing and redevelopment project area number one and to adopt modifications to the tax increment financing plan to modify tax increment finance districts 1-31, 1-32, 1-33, 3-1, and 6-1. And B, submitting comments to the tax increment financing district to the city in lieu of the traditional 30-day comment period. I will boil all that down to say they are not expanding a tax increment finance district. They are not extending a finance tax increment finance district. They are simply spending the money differently that's acquired through the increment. And that's what this, this act does. It gives them permission to spend that money differently, uh, still in benefit within the districts uh, within the city of Coon Rapids. And again, there's no motion necessary here. This is just to acknowledge that we received it. And if we have comments, we'll get them to them. Is there anything else to come before the county board? Wait, before we adjourn, I am gonna to turn to the attorney just to verify that we don't have to have a motion acknowledging we recept it. We could just, we, we read it, so it's, it's noted that it's been received. Mr. Chair, I think you've uh, entered in the record for this meeting, so that would be the acknowledgement necessary. Perfect, just wanted to make sure. With that, seeing nothing else before the board, we are adjourned.